Welcome to the Action Only Podcast, and I am your host, Jalal, and today I have Selena Green on the show, and we are going to have a conversation today that I am really looking forward to, but before we get started, as always, we have to start the show with a quote, and today's quote comes from William Shakespeare. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we might win by fearing to attempt. So I really want that to settle into your minds and just think about there's there's we can always think of why something won't work and we can always convince ourselves of why something won't work. But our mind, our doubts are traitors. So we still have to go ahead and try. And that's the whole point of Action Only Podcast. I want to encourage you to take action. And so how we do that is by interviewing people who are taking action in their own lives. And Selena is, take, Selena is taking action in her life. And she's actually going to start a podcast here soon that I really wanted to hear about. When she hit me up about it, I was like, okay, let's, let's, we're going to get into that. But she is also a um, program director for a nonprofit in Seattle called Abundance of Hope. And we're gonna get we're gonna get into the conversation too and learn a little bit more about that. And I'm just very happy that you are here. And I also wanna say I, I called on Selena one time and I was doing something, uh, me and my wife were doing this thing called um Love Matters. And I hit her up and I was like, hey, you know, do you mind uh, sharing a little story about you and your husband, man, she wrote, she was like, yes, right away, send me back the information um, to kind of tell the little love story of her and her husband. It was amazing. So sometimes we meet these people in our lives. So it's beautiful to be able to come at full circle and bring you on my podcast so we could talk about what you got going on for, because I appreciate how you reached out and helped me when I, I needed your help. So how are you today, Selena? Doing well, y'all. Thank you. And yeah, it's all about, you know, being in community. I actually have a memory of running into you in community mm -hmm. before I had ever really met you in real life. And it was actually really unexpected. I think we were both working at the time and just happened mm -hmm. to be at this kind of networking event. And I remember you just had great energy, you know, the same, you know, the same energy that you have online. That's your energy in real life. You really walk that talk. So um, I'm always here to build community with people who, um, you know, who look like me and who care about my community like I care about my community. So um, I'm just happy to be here. I was really excited uh, when I learned that you were, you know, doing a podcast um, and I immediately went and started listening to one of your episodes just to even see, you know, what is he talking about? What is yeah. the move? What's the mission? And it's just so positive. And I really wanted to do something like that, too. So that's why I um, I even had the idea to do a podcast and put my voice out there, you know, um, mm -hmm. in a time where they're threatening to take people's podcast equipment every other day on Black Twitter. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was interesting because when you hit me up, it was like, wow, OK. I want you to tell people the name of your, your podcast and then we're going to get into it and kind of just, you know, really talk about it because I think there's some interesting pieces that I want to cover of that, but mm -hmm. why don't you tell people the name of your podcast? Yes. Um, so my podcast is the hot girls healing podcast. Um, the hot and this, girls is, healing podcast. <laughs> this is the podcast that, um, you know, is going to be my own voice, my own podcast. I'll actually be doing two other podcasts in partnership with some other folks. Um, but the hot girls healing podcast is, um, something that is deeply personal to me is deeply personal to my healing journey. Um, it was, you know, my healing journey and my professional development that even led me to wanting to launch a podcast, um, to having a platform to speak from. So absolutely. The Hot Girls Healing Podcast. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I remember uh, when you, when you, you know, he was like, yeah, I want to see if I can be a good fit to come your podcast. And then we see me the name, I'm like, the Hot Girls Healing Podcast. <laughs> it's going to be, am I going to be able to, what am I, what is, so I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let me talk to you about this. Cause I'm like what is this about? Because, you know, when you hear the name, for a lot of people, it may be off-putting, right? But for once you we started talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this makes sense. This is important. And 
it is going to catch attention, right? It's just the, just the name of it. And I think one of the things that I'm always curious about is you went on this journey to start healing. Like mm -hmm. what, what pushed you, what pushed you there? What pushed you on that journey to say, Hey, I need to, I need to start healing in my life. And I, I need to, it's time for a change in this area. What, mm. what pushed you there? Um, I think like, honestly, I thought I already was. That's, I thought mm -hmm. I was, and then I found out that I wasn't. And then that's what pushed me to do it for real. Um, so I thought that I could heal through education. I was like, just, you know, I'm gonna go get my psychology degree. I'm gonna figure out why people are acting the way that they acting around me. I'm gonna figure out why I had the childhood I had, you know, and then once I have that education, I'm going to use that education to heal my community and just by achieving and setting goals and doing what I want to do, then I'll be happy and I'll be healed and I'll have good relationships. And I went to college and I got my degree and I graduated and I was not happy. I was working in nonprofit, which is what I always wanted to do. I was helping my community. I was working with, um, you know, black uh, youth, uh, which is what I want to do. I want to work with our future. I want to work with the youth in our community. They the truth. Eh? Um, so I was doing essentially what I wanted to do, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't I wasn't even content most times if I if I was honest with myself. So I had to start figuring out why there was something deeper that I couldn't achieve through education or getting a good job or, you know, there was something else. And um, while I do, you know, consider myself to be, you know, a baddie and a hot girl and, you know, having fun and um, being with my girls, you know, that's all important to me. And it was all important to me, but it wasn't until I started this deeper layer of, okay, what do I actually need to make me happy? What is actually missing? Um, I got into therapy. Um, and these are all things that happened like years ago. And it's been a journey ever yeah. since. It really has. I've had to confront myself a lot. Um, I've had to heal by myself. And I've come to a point where I found that you can heal alone and you can also heal in community. Mm. And I find that the healing that I'm able to do by myself is very critical and it's very important. You know, I'm able to really meet myself and say, okay, this is what I need. Um, and this is what I'm, this is what I've allowed in my life. And this is what I no longer will allow. But then there's also a part of healing that happens in community and is deeply relational. And that was the part of healing that I wasn't getting just by, being more educated or making more and more money with every job that I got that wasn't doing it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, there's, that's a, there's a lot of good nuggets there. I think that, you know, I want to touch on and we all think that, Hey, once we get that job, once we start making more money or once we get that degree, all of a sudden we'll be happy. We'll be fulfilled everything's going to work out. Everything is just, you know, th that's the missing piece. Right. And mm -hmm. then like a lot of us, we get to that place and it's like, okay. And it feels good for a moment. But then when that moment passes, we're still stuck with that feeling of, okay, this didn't make me fulfilled. There's still some work I have to do. So it's amazing mm -hmm. that, you know, you got there, you got to that place and said, Hey, you know, I've got to still heal and mm -hmm. I've got to still figure out some things. And was it the decision to go and say, hey, I need to do counseling because counseling is something, you know, in our community that is, you know, it kind of frowned up or what's, what's wrong mm -hmm. with you? If you got to go counseling, it's becoming a little bit more acceptable, you know, starting to become a little bit more ex acceptable, but there's still a stigma mm -hmm. around it now. Was that you know, when you decided, hey, I am going to go to counseling, was that, you know, was that a really tough decision for you to make? Or it was just like, you know, what, I know this is what I need. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, um, I think, you know, a lot of people have different relationships to therapy. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know that in our community, there's a stigma around it. But I think mm -hmm. for myself specifically, like, I saw so early on the effects 
that unmanaged mental health and unmanaged mental illness specifically can have on mm-hmm. a family, on a child, you know? So I think for myself, so young, I knew that I wanted to manage my mental health. I knew that, you know, there's no way I'm going to be okay after <laughs> after some of the things that I've been through. So I, I was prepared. I wanted to be, you know, out of court in my life, a therapist. Um, it wasn't until I really engaged with, you know, the violence of higher education and those systems that I was like, uh, mm, I'm going to take another route in my community that's a little bit more grounded. But um, healing is something that, you know, I always knew I was going to have to do. I think I just thought that, you know, once I get the education, you know, once I become a therapist was what I thought at the time, I'll be fine. Knowledge is power. That's all I need. All I needed was to know, and then I'd be fine. Right, right, right. (laughs) That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. It's that putting into action. That's the hard part. Yes, yes, (laughs) yes. And, and, and that is, that is the hard part for a lot of us. They, they say that, you know, everybody's heard that saying, you know, uh, knowledge is power, but mm-hmm. we usually don't hear that caveat. Well, it's only a, it's only power if you apply it, you know. So yeah, I I think that that is you know the hard part for a lot of us. So I, you know, I think it's amazing that you you realize, like you said, I, I'm not going to be able to do this on my own, and I have to go get the help. Now, the interesting thing that you said was what you discovered in community when you discovered the healing and community, mm-hmm. how did, was, was that just a, you just kind of, did you always know that you was going to need that piece of it too? Or was that something like when you were doing counseling, you kind of just figured out, Hey, you know what? This might be beneficial too. I don't think I did. I don't think I did know that I was going to need community f- mm-hmm. for it. I think that honestly, my work with abundance of hope, um, mm-hmm. you know, being the program director, Um, being at all of our events. You know, I go to the events, I set up the events, I facilitate the events, I talk to our participants. And, you know, being in those spaces, that is actually what helped me realize. I was like, oh my God, this feeling that I get when I'm in these spaces, there's something to this. There's something to these spaces. And I wanted to do something to expand the amount of time that I spend in those spaces. Oh, okay. By, you know, creating a new one, creating one yeah. where in the nonprofit sector, it's like you can heal, but it's like, there's going to be a sprinkle of re- respectability politics on top of it <laughs> for <laughs> okay. me. That's uh-huh. kind of how I feel. And this yeah. is, you know, we're a non judgmental organization, so mm-hmm. you're not going to get any of that abundance of hope, but I feel like the overall field still has a lot of respectability politics in it. And so why I wanted to create a space that was not within the nonprofit sector and just a space where I'm, you know, having a voice is because you don't have to, you can twerk and heal, you know, you can dance and heal, you can go out to the club and still want to heal, right? Because there's, there's power in meeting yourself where you are. I acknowledged long ago that I wasn't the person that I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but now I am, even as I'm going forward, I'm the person that I want to be because I'm a person that isn't worried about what someone else thinks about me or what it looks like I am. There's a lot of assumptions that people can project on someone who looks like me, mm-hmm. but I don't have to worry about that. What I have to worry about is who I want to be, what my goals are, how healthy the relationships are that I engage in, where I'm putting my energy. That's where my power is. And as long as I stick to those things, then I will always be the most healed version of myself because I will always be healing. I will always be growing. I will always be moving in community and being held accountable by the people who know and love me. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And so your podcast, and it, it will be, a it's almost from what I hear you saying, your podcast will be a place that is like holding space for those people who are, you know, ready to begin their journey because you're willing to meet them where they're at. You're not saying, hey, you've got to already have it figured out. You've got to already be this or already be that. You're saying, hey, I will, on this podcast, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you where you're at to encourage you yes. where you're at. 
Yeah. And we can be a little messy. I'm a little messy, okay? Mm-hmm. But just be accountable to the mess. <laughs> that's right, all. Right, 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 right. Because right. <laughs> that's how then you can create healthy relationships where mm-hmm. then I'm safe, you're safe, you know, we safe. And it's yeah. it's something that we can then take into other spaces because this kind of healing and respect that I've learned to have, um, the my nonprofit that I work with is family operated, right? Mm-hmm. So it's founded by my mom. And it's operated by myself and my two sisters and my mom. So we there's no way we could work together and not confront the ways in which our family dynamic mm. doesn't work in some ways, right? Yeah. Because now we're trying to bring a family dynamic into a professional setting and then all the cracks get exposed. So right. I've definitely learned that like healing and healing in community, healing in your family, all of these things are connected. Healing the way that I am with myself heals the way that I am with my sisters, heals the way that I am with my friends, and all of these relationships become more healthy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's so important that, you know, and these are things that we don't rarely talk about the importance of, right? Because I, mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we're focused on, you know, if we got it right within ourselves, then we don't necessarily got to worry about how these other relationships are functioning and, and different things like that person has to figure that out for themselves. But Mm. if we're interacting with those people, then we kind of got to figure out how to manage those relationships and how we can, even with our healed self, how we can still interact in a way that one is, is good for us and also helps, you know, make that relationship good for them also too so i think that's very interesting and just your overall depth of understanding that you know this is what you got to do because a lot of us know this is what we have to do but not a lot of us do it so i really Mm -hmm. think it's great that you know you you put yourself out there to really take these steps and that's a that's a real place of vulnerability to yes (laughs) put yourself there you know that it really is and and when you experience this this place of are there are did you have moments where you felt like you know i'm here i am like i'm i'm showing you know you who i am but feeling like you know it it's since it's such a place of of vulnerability like maybe this is too much or maybe did you ever have those types of feelings at all yes i actually found out that i was insecure And that was news to me, child, because I thought I was confident. (laughs) Um, But what I realized that my confidence wasn't based on really anything real. It wasn't my confidence Mm. wasn't based on knowing myself, knowing myself deeply and knowing what I want and who I am. Mm. It wasn't based off that. And so because my confidence was based off of a weak foundation, I had to really you know, start right at the foundation and say, who am I? You know, as a 29 year old person is when I'm having this conversation with myself. So um, it's just a lot, you know, so much has gone into this. Years of work have accumulated to me feeling confident enough. You know, I used to hear be seen and not heard when I was a kid. So, Mm, mm, mm. (laughs) Yeah. And so, I, I, you know, I took that to heart. A part of me took that to heart, even though I thought I was so, you know, defiant against it. I thought I was so resistant. I thought that I was going to make sure my voice was heard. But when it really counted, I didn't make sure my voice was heard. Mm. And that had effects on my life. I was confident in spaces where maybe I shouldn't have been so confident. Maybe I showed up as overconfident somewhere where if I was really confident, I could have just shown up chill and actually confident, you know what I mean? But you can see the difference between real confidence and fake confidence once you step out of that fake space. Yeah, yeah. And I just want it to be real, you know? I want to be genuine. Yeah, yeah. So when you think about, when you think about the podcast, Mm -hmm. what, you know, I know you want to hold space for, for, for women. What is some of the things that I think like, you're looking forward to just some of the topics or things that you're even like, this is what I got to cover once I start this podcast. Cause you've seen it and you're like, man, mm-hmm. people, we really need to have these conversations. What are, you don't have to give me a bunch of them. What are some of the things you're thinking about? You know, you want to start mm-hmm. talking about. 
Yeah, I think that's um, a really good question. And for me, uh, that may change from season to season. But I think mm-hmm. especially for the first season, as this is really going to be me introducing the podcast and what this space is really for and what I'm trying to establish, I think I want to talk about some of the things that I've been able to heal through. Things like pole dancing, things like romance novels, you know, Mm -hmm. things like my work with my family's nonprofit Abundance of Hope and learning how to work with my family and heal our dynamics. These are the things that have really influenced me even wanting to write or sorry, excuse me, even wanting to do a podcast. Um, These have influenced things like me wanting to write a journal for the first time in my entire life. Um, It's just I I've just felt for so long that I've had something to say, but I think it took time to figure out one, what that was and two, how to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's beautiful that you, you didn't let, you know, cause a lot of us have that feeling that there's something inside of us that we need to let out, but we, we don't. Right. So you're, Mm -hmm. you have the courage to say, Hey, this is something you wouldn't let it die. And so you're bringing it to life. And yes. I think there's so, I, I like, it was, it's so funny because like I said, when you first told me the name of it, I'm like, man, I don't know about this, but the more it's just these non-conventional things that, you know, even the way in which you, you use certain things to help you heal. And there's mm-hmm. people that are actively involved in, you know, all different types of things. Like you said, you can go to the club and still want to heal. You can do these different things and still want to heal. And the fact that you're willing to hold space for those people and to say, you know what? Okay, I got you. And this is, you know, how we're going to, to look at this. And this is, you know, some of the ways that I've healed in this same similar way. I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now I do want to get into when we had a conversation, um, about uh your work at the nonprofit mm-hmm. nonprofit but before we do that i'm going to ask you some questions these oh, are yes. uh these are you know i've decided for the year 2023 that i was going to you know interject a little bit of my randomness into the podcast so you just happen to be the first <laughs> guest so here we go my first question is if you had to describe yourself as a fruit, what fruit would you be? <laughs> um, wow, that's actually a good one. Okay, I know it. <laughs> okay, I'm what is it? I actually want to go with um, a strawberry. Uh, one, strawberry. because that's just the first thing that popped in my head. Uh-huh. Um, and two, I think that um strawberries are a well-liked fruit but there's Uh, actually you'd be surprised there's a lot of people that don't like strawberry um and i feel like for myself i'm genuinely well liked but like color me surprised anytime somebody don't like me (laughs) because i'm like (laughs) what's not to like (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) okay okay (laughs) Uh, that's, that's funny. I got one more for you and I got to, uh, find it real quick. See how I'm a good prepared podcast host because, uh, I know where everything is right when I'm looking (laughs) for it. (laughs) And, uh, you know what? I am actually going to ask it. I'm going to ask you at the end because yes, that's what I would do. I would ask you at the end. Um, because that'd give me time to find it. And then I won't have that much dead air. So <laughs> that's how we go do that. Okay. So you are, like you said, you're a part of this, uh, your family owned um, nonprofit, Abundance of Hope. What is, I know you're in charge of the, you're the program director. Mm-hmm. What is the mission for, first I want to ask you, what is the mission of Abundance of Hope? And then mm-hmm. I want to get into what you actually do as a program director, because it was something very interesting that I uh, have questions about that you do. So um, what is the mission of Abundance of Hope? Um, The mission is to provide equitable, culturally responsive, holistic, and person-centered 
Homelessness Prevention Services uh, to our community's most at-risk youth, ages 12 to 26. Um, so as the programs director, my job is to make sure any programming that we have um, promotes mental, emotional, and physical wellness in our participants. Um, it's my job to make sure our programming is holistic and person-centered as well. Um, I do this, I think, by our person first approach. So when we're thinking about a person, when I'm thinking about what I would have needed as, you know, a youth who actually did experience homelessness, what, what, what did I need that I didn't get? Mm. Um, and I think a lot of the time when it comes to the approaches of homelessness, we focus too much on, you know, kind of the things that I was focused on. Like education is definitely important. Housing, extremely important, right? Obviously, the yeah. one of the most important things for homelessness is a house, right, some place right. to live. Um, but other than that, there's so many things that go into maintaining and sustaining a healthy and thriving life. And that's where we want to go. We want to say not just how do we get you housed, but how do we help you maintain and sustain a thriving life? And so we do things like talk about how to maintain healthy relationships. We talk about mm. consent and boundaries. We talk about how to manifest your future, right? We talk about um, normalized violence in our communities and what skills can we use to denormalize violence in our communities on, um, you know, the micro through macro levels. So we do our programming. It goes beyond just how do we get you housed? It mm. really is a comprehensive approach to living a thriving life. That is amazing. And that, that is, that is very, that's amazing. Like you, cause you know, part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, you know, shelter is one of our, yeah. our basic needs. Right. So you're saying, okay, yeah, we're going to help you figure out that. But like, as you discovered earlier, you know, education isn't just, if I, if I help you with just that, yes, that's solved, but it's not going to solve all these other areas or these things you may experience like violence, not having boundaries mm -hmm. and all these other things. So you guys are really coming at it from a place of, okay, we want to help you with all of that because this is what's going to help you be a more holistic person. Absolutely. And so I, I love that. I love that. And, and also, things... go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, I just wanted to say, you know, another part of it is that community aspect, right? Because mm -hmm. we can't LLC ourselves as a community into the community that we need. So mm -hmm. it's also about once I'm thriving and I'm sustaining, how do I make sure I'm also reaching into my community and making sure that I make a difference for the next person? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And you know what? You keep saying this with this word community and it's, it, it gave me a thought. Um, mm -hmm. When I moved to uh, South Carolina, I, I started going to a, a men's group at a, at my church. I had never been around so many men who are openly sharing, you know, the different things that are going on with them and just being sitting there and being able to listen to other men saying, I've been there. It did mm -hmm. so much for me as a man. It did so much for my spirit to see that. So I really do believe, like you said, in the effects that, community can have on us as as people and i think it's a space especially for men that we're not always willing to put ourselves in or be vulnerable in or mm -hmm. or you know be a part of because we think that nobody gets it but one of the things i've learned is most of us men go through the same things as all the other men and somebody's been there, somebody's done it, and somebody get, has a tip or two that may be useful for you. So I really just wanted to piggyback on that that community thing because you kept kept saying it that every time you said it, it kept reminding me of my experience with that. So I, I think that is amazing. One of the things you said um, when we talked prior to this was one of the things you do is you help people create vision boards. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really want you to speak to that process because I've, I've done it before and I've, I've had 
it, it, it's interesting because I've, I've had mixed mixed thoughts about it. But it's funny because one of the things that was on my vision board uh, a few years back was um, my family size and my 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 wife. And mm. it really turned out to be kind of like exactly what was on my vision board as yep. far as the picture goes. So it's kind of, it's kind of funny how that worked out, but speak to that. Cause I think a lot of people don't do vision boards, but um, I haven't did one. I think that was the last one I did. It's probably like three years ago, but I want to do one again, but talk to us about that. What is, why should we even do that? And what is like, what are the benefits of that? And why did you decide? There's a lot of questions. Why did you decide, Hey, this should be a part of the program. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely vision boards are kind of starting to become more popular, but still a lot of people aren't doing them. Um, what made me think of vision boards is I was asked to create programming to help people with goal setting. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my goal setting, I just think of it as manifesting. How am I going to manifest what I want? So when I used to manifest in the past, um, or what I would just think of as imagining a better life, right? Because visualizations are a part of manifestation. And I didn't know this as a kid, obviously. Um, but I used to, when I was a kid and I was, you know, going through where have you, I would escape mentally. And I would imagine the life that I wanted to live when I was an adult. I had my 20s figured out. The way that I'm actually low-key living the exact life that I manifested for myself <laughs> when I was a kid, okay? Yeah. So I knew that manifestation could happen. And I knew that, you know, a lot of the times in the past, I would manifest off of like just what I didn't want, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a bummer. But when you manifest in a positive way with a vision board and you're cutting stuff out and it's fun and there's music, you feel good about what you're manifesting, you know? You're manifesting and you're putting this positive energy into it and you're seeing yourself doing it and you're figuring out, okay, so if these are my big goals, how can I make small goals? Because another thing that stops people from taking action is like, we know what we want at the end of the road, but what are the steps that are going to get us there? That's what we yes. really need to be focused yes. on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I also find that if you focus on the smaller steps, it's less intimidating. Mm -hmm. So when I think about my vision board, sometimes I'll make one for the whole year. And then what I've been getting into now is making multiple vision boards. Like I used to make one per year. Now I'm like, I'm going to make one at this party. And then the next time we get together and we all do a vision board, I'm going to make one for my personal life. And then I'm going to make one for my professional life. Right. So like make as many as you want. Make virtual um, vision boards. Canva. Do you know Canva? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love her. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canva has virtual vision boards. I did right? not Like know anybody that. can use the free version. You can make yourself a virtual vision board if you don't want to cut out magazine clippings or what have you. But just spending some time thinking about what you want and how you're going to get it. That's manifestation. Thinking about, I want, you know, to be on a yacht with my friends 10 years from now. Okay, so what am I going to do right now that could lead to me being there in 10 years? If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, you know, crawl. crawl. Yep. If you can't crawl on your hands and knees, army crawl, but keep mm -hmm. moving towards your goal. Yeah. See, I love that. And I think that's the piece that oh, I, I, when I hear sometimes, you know, when people say manifest, I sometimes cringe because I think that the next sentence is not followed up with, you still got to take action. Like, you can't just sit there and be like, I'm a manifest. Mm -hmm a billion dollars and then do nothing then like, like yeah yeah that's <laughs> not that's not gonna work so you know i like the fact that you, you as soon as you say yeah they manifest but now you got to break it down into small steps mm -hmm. and then decide how you're going to do that and then go do that you know yes. so I, I i love that that you know you explained it like that and that's really you know what this podcast is about taking action and you know Understanding. So now I am going to do the Canva one because I did not know that. So I <laughs> thank you for that tip. I yep. am definitely going to do mine on Canva because I was thinking like when you was talking about it, I'm thinking like, man, I don't got no newspaper. I mean, I don't got no <laughs> magazines to cut out. But now I'm like, OK, I can do this Canva one like I can do this. So, yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to, going to do that now. I want to be respectful of your time. So I do have. um 
one, two more questions. Okay. And one, I my first my first question is if you were going to manifest, who would be the perfect like celebrity person that you could think of that embodies like what this podcast is going to be about? Like if you could just, you know, if you could just think of one person like, man, if I got this person on the podcast or something like, man, they really embody what I'm trying to do. Or it doesn't even have to be a celebrity. It could be anybody that you know that really embodies what your vision is for this podcast. Mm, okay. Um. <laughs> While you're thinking of yours, I'm going to tell you who mine's is. Okay, and that's going to tell me yours. Yeah. I'm going to... 50 Cent is... <laughs> Every, embodies everything that I, I believe in my mind. I believe he he talks a lot of crap, but that man is a man of action. And he creates, um, he, he, he puts himself in situations to achieve things that he set out to achieve. And the way he does it, and the fact that he's, um, he's very calculated. That is my, he is the person I'm actually going to try uh, my hardest. I'm going I'm to do a whole post on 50 Cent. I'm going mm. to try to get his attention this year because before the end of 2023, I'm manifesting, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> I'm going to get 50 Cent on the Action Only podcast. Somehow, some way, I'm, I'm, I'm getting him on this podcast. <laughs> okay, so he will be that. my guy. He would be my guy. Okay, so it has to be someone who's alive then. Or no, like because I was about to say Harriet Tubman. She was a hot girl, okay, (laughs) and she was here for the community. Hey, hey, I love. I actually Um, love that. Yeah, Uh, like come through. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure her second husband was like younger too. Okay, so hey. <laughs> and you know they was a not girl. Back in the day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hey, that is a that is a good one. And I think it it really does that it really does speak to, you know, everything you've said as far as, you know, what you're trying to do with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and she really was about, you know, helping her community. And you know when you start saying she had the younger husband, she turns out hair tub was a hot girl. Like who would have known? <laughs> we got we got to let black women and fems be multifaceted in our community, mm-hmm. and I think that's another part of what the podcast is about. It's you know mm-hmm. we are more than just one thing. Yeah. all of okay. us, all okay. of us are more than just one thing. You know. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, my my last question is you um uh why am i drawing a blank okay if someone was sitting in front of you and it's the same question i asked everybody so i don't know why i was drawing a blank but (laughs) if someone is sitting in front of you and you had to and they're telling they're struggling to take action on their goals Mm. or dreams what advice would you give them what would you say to that person right now Well, my first um, thing that I would say to them is be gentle with yourself. And that's something that I'm constantly learning. I used to have really harsh self-talk. And I think that sometimes being really harsh with ourselves isn't actually as motivating as we think it is. It could be contributing to us having a hard time taking action. So first, I'd say be gentle with yourself. And then I would go back to can't run, crawl, right? So... What is the smallest thing that you can do right now that will help you move towards your goal? If even if that is something, if sit on the couch, take a few deep breaths and think about, you know, what you want. If it's sit down, write down three really small goals that you can do this week to move you towards your goals. Right. Make it as small as it needs to be for you to be able to digest it and digest it. Move forward. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right. And Selena, I just want to say thank you for an amazing episode. And <laughs> I am looking forward to when Hot Girls podcast launches. I want to definitely make sure once you drop that first episode that I give you a shout out on the show to 
tell people to go find it? Because um, I think it's your what you're trying to do is going to be important for the community. And I think that, like you said, one of the things I think that you said that really stuck out to me is understanding that we have to reach people where they're at. Mm -hmm. And we're all at different places on this journey through life. So your willingness to say, hey, you don't have to be this certain thing to still be still be loved, still be valued and to mm -hmm. still come along this journey with me. I'm going to meet you where you're at. And I know yeah. that, you know, society may say, hey, where you're at may not be, you know, what, what society, you know, uh, finds is the right place to be or the right mm -hmm. thing to be doing. But you're saying, hey, I'm still going to encourage you. I'm still going to build this community for you to be a part of. So I, I really think that is amazing. And I really appreciate your just your openness to talk about your healing journey, you know, and all the and all the how it got started and the ways mm -hmm. that, you know, <laughs> different spaces that you've had to heal in and just really the the community piece too, really talking about that. And so much of this was really about you taking action yeah. and realizing that, you know, it wasn't enough, which you, which you thought was going to be enough, wasn't enough. And then not saying, uh, well, there's nothing I can do. You said, Hey, it's not enough, but I got to figure out a way to get to the place that I want to be. And you've also talked about how the power of manifestation you're, like you said, you're living, you're almost living the life you exactly <laughs> talked about when you were younger. And so there is power in, in, in manifestation. And as you point out, what you got to take those small steps. So I hope anybody listening to this today is encouraged to, hey, start your healing journey and begin where you're at with whatever yes. it is in your life, whatever you need to take action on, begin where you're at. Because you can do this if you can't walk. Like Selena said, crawl, <laughs> you know, do what you got to do. Thank you so much for having me, Jalal. This has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, no problem. I, I appreciate you. All right, you guys, this has been an episode of Action Only Podcast. And I thank everyone for listening. And remember to, uh, I think there's a way to subscribe <laughs> or something or, you know, give it five stars, whatever you can do in podcast land to let the people know, because we are going to make this the fastest growing podcast of 2023 and i need yes. your help to do it so action only podcast i'm jalal and this was selena green and we are gone Bye. Okay.